All right, let's look at problem number 10. This one says, the multi-flash photograph below shows a collision between two pool balls. The ball that was initially at rest shows up as a dark image in its initial position because its image was exposed several times before it was struck and began moving. So that's this one they're talking about. By making measurements on the figure, determine numerically whether or not energy appears to have been conserved in the collision. What systemic effects would limit the accuracy of your test? So what we gotta do here is we gotta actually measure how far apart these images are. And assuming that, like, like let's say you assume that they're a second apart, even though it's, it's, more, it's going to be more like a tenth of a second because a pull ball moves really fast. So, but if you assume it's the same amount of time between each picture, then you can say, oh, well, let's say I measure from here, one, two, three, four, five. So this will be five seconds later. And you can say, okay, well, I measure that distance and I can divide by the time. So our velocity will be change in distance or change in time if we have a constant velocity. And we're assuming these have a constant velocity and we can measure what their speeds are. The speed for this one before it hits, the speed for this one after it hits, and the speed for this one after it hits. And then we can compare the kinetic energies by adding them together because remember that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Now, it doesn't say this in the problem, but we can assume that the masses are the same for this ball coming in and bouncing this way. And for this one, in the game of pool, uh, from what I understand, all of the balls have to have the same mass. That's just to, to make the game possible to play. I guess you would have an interesting game if you had different mass balls. Anyway, so assume the same mass. So if we want to compare the kinetic energy before and after, well, before it's going to be 1 half mv squared of this one. I'm going to call it v1. Let's say this one's moving with v1. We'll call this one v2 and this v3. And that at, at before this one's moving at zero speed, so that's going to be initial kinetic energy. And then comparing it to afterward, we want to know if this is equal. It'll be one half mv2 squared plus one half mv3 squared. And if we just assume that m is equal to 1 or something, this is going to cancel off on both sides of the equation. The 1 half cancels out. So really what we're looking for is, is v1 squared equal to v2 squared plus v3 squared? This is our question. And if it is, then we have conservation of kinetic energy. And if it's not, then we have energy being lost. So in order to actually get numbers for this, we need to actually measure. So what I've done, blew this up. Get that in there, yeah. So blew this up, and you want to use a ruler in order to measure this. I had my measurements already written down. Yeah. So you want to use a, a ruler in order to measure this. So I'm not going to measure it on here. I'm just going to tell you what I what I got. You're going to get different numbers because it depends on how big you make this picture. Like I made it to a certain size, but if you print it out and measure it over here, you're going to get different numbers. Or if you measure it on your screen, you're going to get a different number. But right here, let's say, I'm just going to show you how I'm, I'm doing this. So I want to measure from the same point on the ball. So if it's on the right, then I'm going to measure to a point on the right, for example, to be consistent about it. So right there, I would say maybe that's 1 to about 12.6, I think. 12.6, I think. Actually, I'll just do it again. So 12.6 centimeters. And then I'm going to count how many there are. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units of time have elapsed. So I divide 12.6 by 5 and I get 12.6 divided by 5 2.52 and that's going to be my speed. Uh, I won't write the units because I don't really know what the units are. And then I'm going to look at this one and same thing. Uh, so for this one I was measuring from here from this one to the last one. I think it's okay to measure this ball because 
you can assume that this frame is taken after the collision. This one is before the collision. So the collision happens sometime between this one and this one. And so you could take this edge here and go all the way to this edge over here and see what that is. So that's about, I'm looking at that, 8.3, I want to say. 8.3 divided by, how many are there? Well, we're going from this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 frames. So 8.3 divided by 7. 1.186, I'm going to write. 0.186. And I'm looking at this one. This one is where I wanted to make a point that you don't, you, we don't want to measure this one because this is not necessarily at the same distance in time between these and these and these. So you want to measure between this one and I guess you're going to have to use this one. I would use this guy and this guy if I could clearly see the edge of this one. So then this guy, put that, align that, and I'm getting about eight and a half. So eight and a half, but in this one there's one, two, three, four. I get 2.125. So these are my speeds, V3 and V2. And if I square them, so Two point fifty two squared, six point three oh five three five two point one two five squared plus one point one eight six squared five point nine two. So there's a, a decent difference. 6.35, make it nicer. So kinetic energy initial, 6.35, and kinetic energy final, 5.92. So let's see how much loss there is. So to find out the percentage change, you're gonna do the change in the quantity. So you're gonna do final minus initial over initial. So I'll do 6.35, minus 5.92 all over 6.35 so this is telling me that we lost 6.7 percent of kinetic energy was lost i'm going to say that that is enough to to say that it's not a that the kinetic energy is not conserved you wouldn't expect it to be fully conserved because you're going to get some sound that absorbs some of the energy. So some of the energy is going to get lost in sound. Some of it is going to be lost in the heat. Um, but these will be made to lose as little kinetic energy as possible. So 6.7% is kind of in the middle of where you want to say it is conserved or it's not conserved. I'm going to say it is not. And for the second part of the problem where it asks... What systematic effects will limit the accuracy of your test? Systematic effects would be how are we measuring? So I'm measuring with this ruler, and it has an accuracy of plus or one, plus or minus one millimeter. And depending on how um, how crisp this image is and how how accurately we're measuring it, also depending on whatever camera took this photo, and you know how um, how accurate the spacing and time is. That's going to affect things. Um, probably those are the biggest things. All right, done.